Isn't it great that Congress changed the tax law for 1988, simplified it, modernized it, did away with all those complex provisions? Why, they managed to get the tax law down to only 2,700 pages. Nobody understands all of this stuff, but there is a way for you to do your income taxes by yourself quickly, inexpensively, and correctly using tax preparation software. In fact, using your computer to do your taxes may be reason enough to justify owning one. Today, we take a look at tax preparation software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and this is Gary Kilville. Gary, it's income tax time again, as you know, and that means we've got to do our income taxes. A couple of ways you can get help. You can go to the bookstore and buy these kinds of things, which can help you do your taxes. But better yet is to buy the software that these same guys are writing right now, because all the rules, the logic, and the strategy that's in the books is in the software. For example, this is TurboTax from Chipsoft. It not only tells you how to depreciate and amortize, it does the depreciation for you. It does the amortization for you. It automatically moves the numbers up and back from federal returns to state returns returns and so on. They're pretty impressive, but it seems to me when you think about these things, it's really just a vertical application of a spreadsheet, isn't it? Well, Stuart, it is in a sense. Any vertical application is exactly that. You take a general technique like spreadsheets and you apply it to a specific problem. In this case, it'll lead you through the steps mm -hmm. required in or the numbers and things of that sort. The advantage, of course, is with these programs, you can play what-if games. Yeah. You can uh, juggle a number around and see what it does at <laughs> right. the bottom line. Uh, now, of course, you could use a spreadsheet, but you're going to have to pay a whole lot more attention to the tax guide if you do. Now, the advantage of these programs is you may actually save some, enough money to pay for the program, too. Gary, we're going to take a look at some of the best examples of tax preparation software for the Apple II, the Macintosh, and the IBM PC. We're going to begin with a visit to one of the eight regional IRS processing centers to find out what happens to your tax return once it gets into the IRS computers. One of the biggest mailing lists in the world belongs to the Internal Revenue Service, which handles about 100 million tax returns each year at its 10 regional centers. Close to 20 million returns pass through the office in Fresno, California, and most of them are still handwritten. From any point of view, the Fresno Service Center is a massive operation. The single-level building is as long as 18 football fields, and almost everywhere you look, there are mountains of paper. To keep from being buried under stacks of forms, Fresno had to adapt its computers to the physical manipulation of paper returns. Barcode readers in the mailroom pre-sort and classify envelopes. Checks are sorted automatically by bank name or location. But people still do most of the data entry. Optical character readers can handle some forms, like single page returns, but they still require human assistance to identify a scrawled six or a sloppy seven. For example, right now we're transcribing 100% of the tax, well, not 100, we're transcribing about 95% of the tax returns using key to disk systems. Uh, one of the things we'd like to do is get 50% of those returns filed electronically. Then, of the remaining 50% that aren't filed electronically, we'd like to perfect OCR technology so that we've got uh, maybe 50% of that uh, being transcribed by machine or collect, uh, data collected by machine. And then of the residual paper that we simply can't get rid of, rather than move the paper around this building, what we'd like to do is put the paper on optical disk and move the images. Although a great deal of calculating goes on at the center, it is not of the number crunching type. So computers are there mostly for data entry and retrieval. As if to balance input with output, the Fresno Service Center produces literally tons of hard copy. High-speed laser printers consume two million feet of paper per month. 
turned into notices, warnings, and other correspondence. The breakthrough is going to be practitioners, tax preparers, professional tax preparers filing electronically with us. In California, 50 to 55 percent of all tax returns are done by preparers. Desktop PCs are an uncommon sight at the IRS office, and when they are visible, it's usually as terminals. In fact, the agency sees a limited role for the PC, either inside or outside the center. Right now, there's no, uh, there are no plans in the works to provide a, a capability for an individual with a PC to dial into us and file. Uh, we have to have some assurances uh, about the quality of the data that's coming to us. Uh, the other concern is, is security, of course. We're not going to let people uh, dial into our mainframe computers and file directly. Uh, there will be a non, there will be an electronic break in this filing. The expression paperless office was once just a dream at this IRS service center. But with a combination of electronic filing, optical storage, and intelligent scanners, it may take on a new meaning. Joining us in the studio now is Nicholas Kofsky Sky, the president of Sky Computer Resources of Portland, Oregon. Next to Nicholas is Ed Tittle, contributing editor to Magazine and the author of several articles on tax preparation software. Ed, most people to take their pile of receipts and W-2 forms down to the local office to have their uh, tax prepared. Why would anyone want to use a computer program? Well, there's a couple pretty good reasons why you might want to use a computer. First, uh, the computer's a little more forgiving than your pencil and eraser and lets you do things over. And second, you get a chance to work through several different variations on your taxes to pick out the one that comes out best for you. Now, what about updates? Do they usually have an update for every year? The tax laws change, I guess, from year to year, right? Well, you'll usually buy a standard program, and they will issue updates on a year-by-year -year basis uh, to reflect any changes mm -hmm. in the tax law. Okay, Nick, what does your uh, tax preparation program do? Well, this is a, a call Federal Tax Forms, and it works with AppleWorks. Um, we decided to use our AppleWorks templates because of this uh, standard interface. People already know how to use it, and also time uh, for preparing them. It uh, takes less time, and we get it to the people before they receive their W-2 forms. Can we take a look at it? Sure. Here's a screen from the 1040. We've already entered some amounts, including your salary and some uh, interest income. However, some, one of the features is the automatic transfer from one uh, template to another. By pressing the solid Apple A, we can go directly to the Schedule A and be able to transfer information to and from um, the various uh, spreadsheets that are available. Mm -hmm. Here is the Schedule A to 1040. We'll do that one. I mean the 1040 to the Schedule A. It takes information from the 1040 that's needed, places it onto the Schedule A uh, in the right places, and is ready for your calculations mm -hmm. for Schedule A. Each schedule has a set of instructions, a transfer area that if you're doing this manually, you have a place where you can find it, and the actual form itself, which looks like the IRS form. When you've completed your calculations, you press get, uh, solid Apple A again. It gets you to your transfer menu. You select where you want it to go to, and we'll go to the 1040. It's on its way to the 1040. Takes the amount uh, for that's deductible, mm -hmm. places in the right place, and you uh, calculate by doing open Apple K for calculation, and you're ready to do your taxes. To do your taxes, you do solid Apple T. These are some of the macros that we've installed. It takes the amount to be uh, calculated for your uh, liability, takes your uh, number, your filing status number, and then it calculates your taxes. Which are? Which, at the very bottom here, is showing that you owe. Okay, we owe $2,456. 56. It then takes that amount, transfers it back to the 1040, and you can press open Apple K to complete the calculations. We've entered the figures for your uh, credits and so on. We can now scroll to the very bottom of the 1040 form, and you can see that, well, you got a refund this time of $369. Nick, does your program let you print right onto the 1040 form then? Yeah, it does. And it also prints uh, the forms and schedules so that they come out looking very much like the tax forms themselves. And I take it this is at the low end cost-wise. How much does this program right, this cost? This is $39.95 for the basic packet. And if there are additional forms that are needed, they're $5 extra per form. And do you need the 2GS to run this? No, you can use any Apple that can use Apple Works, and uh, also with the Apple III with three easy pieces. OK, thank you. In just a minute, we're going to take a look at a tax program for the Macintosh that Ed Tittle calls a godsend. So stay with us.
Joining us in the studio now is Susan Morgan, president of Softview Incorporated, the developers of Mac and Tax, and back with us again, Ed Tittle. Gary? Yeah, we've all seen the major changes in the tax laws for 87. How has that affected the use of tax preparation programs? Well, it's made things a little bit more complicated, especially in the areas of things like passive interest and passive income. And I think you'll find that this program we're about to look at is going to show us some fairly helpful features to uh, get us over that first hump. Mm -hmm. Okay, Susan, now you've uh, uh, been, this uh, Mac and Tax has been out for quite a while. Uh, what major changes have you, have you done for uh, this year's tax? Well, we've added uh, a number of forms and schedules. We now have about 50 form schedules worksheets. We compute things like passive losses and depreciation, mm -hmm. and we've added a number of other features to the program. Could, Could you, you run through it yeah. for us? I guess that's what Gary sure. was asking, too. Yeah. Magatax puts the form on the screen, as you can see here. We've already entered the name and the Social Security number. Every time I hit return, I'll move to another field. And for check boxes like this, I just point and click, and I'll have my X's inserted. Let's move down to the money areas that are more interesting. I just point and click to enter an amount, and it's automatically formatted, and it automatically inserts cents when I hit the decimal point. Plus, every time I hit return, it automatically computes. If I don't want to enter an amount, I want to itemize instead, I just double click, and I'll pull up this kind of an itemization window. And this is a refund, so I can title it refund. And I can put in refund from the state. Tab across, the state was rather generous to me. When I hit return, its uh, total appears here and dynamically linked there. And from the city, the city was nowhere near as generous. Now it retotals and again dynamically links. I can itemize any line on any form or any of the schedules mm -hmm. at any time. And speaking of forms and schedules, we have a rather generous amount of form schedules, worksheets, and statements, including the uh, extension to file <laughs> for the favorite. latecomers. <laughs> Uh, to access one, you just select it, and it appears on the screen, linking in the name and the Social Security number. And we'll put an amount in here. It automatically will total as soon as I hit return. And then as soon as I close it, it will automatically link back and appear in the proper mm -hmm. place on the uh, 1040. Uh, we have some worksheets to help you with the items that are difficult, like what you mentioned, the passive losses. This mm -hmm. one is for investment interest. Suppose that my interest was related to a passive activity, which involves the new tax laws. I click here, and I can enter the description. I have a loan that I used for a partnership. I'll enter the amount that I paid interest, and it will automatically mm -hmm. compute for me the interest allowed and suspended. And then when I close this out, that's linked to the Schedule A and the passive loss schedule. If I had a question about one of the items, I wanted instructions, I would double click on the form on the text and I have the IRS mm -hmm. instructions on a line by line basis exactly word for word from the booklet. And we can have them for all the forms and schedules just by double clicking. And then when I'm done with the return, what I want to do is print it out, sign it, and send it in. And of course you can do that printing all your forms and schedules directly onto plain paper. And Susan, these are the forms that Macintax prints out? Right. This is the form printed on plain paper using a dot matrix and a laser printer, the form with all the data, and it prints all the forms and schedules this way. And this year you have Macintax, in fact, on an IBM and a, and a 2GS, don't right, you? Right, and it's under the name of TaxView on both those machines. Uh, you called us a godsend. Why do you like it so much? All you have to know is the numbers. It knows the rules. <laughs> okay, that's great. Okay, in just a minute, we'll see two of the top-rated tax programs for the IBM PC. But first, you know, many people are going to professional tax preparers this year to do their returns, but you'll find increasingly they're using computers in the same tax preparation software. Wendy Woods has a report. For the first time this tax year, Bob Smith, a veteran tax preparer, is using a computerized program to do the planning and preparation for his client's tax returns. The program, which comes complete with its own PC, hard disk, and laser printer, is specifically designed for tax accountants. It's called Professional Tax Partner, and it contains nearly all the tax forms. As each form is filled out by the preparer, the program automatically calculates. This is a very, very important tool because I don't have to spend all of my time going through calculations and forms and making sure that I get everything on the right line and I don't transpose figures. I simply have to input the information and then I know what the results are going to be and then coupled with another program, I can take a look at the forecast all the way out through 1991. 
Once the tax return has been completed, all the forms can be printed out, filled out, and are ready to be signed by the client. Bob Smith says the computer has allowed him to take on more business since each customer's return can be done faster. While the computer has made the accountant's job faster and more efficient, it will never be able to replace the planning and experience necessary to get you the fattest tax refund. So no matter how sophisticated tax preparation programs get, they aren't expected to put people like Bob Smith out of business. In Burlingame, California, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. With us in the studio now is Deborah Miller, Director of Marketing for Simon & Schuster Software, and next to her is Dr. Jim Howard, President of Howard Soft. Jim, we've seen a wide range of prices in the tax preparation software from less than $50 to several hundred dollars. What do you get in, a, say, a $300 package that you wouldn't find in a, say, $40 package? Well, what you really get is tax depth and automation. Uh, the more expensive packages, of course, are, are designed for the involved return, not the simple return, mm -hmm. okay. not the typical under 50000 family. Uh -huh. Okay, Deborah, let's take a look at what you have, which is what, about $69 you sell the last year program for? Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also available to last year's users uh, of the program uh, for $39.95 with proof of purchase. And uh, one of the key features of our program, which we carried over from last year, is our unique interview section, which, if you answer a series of questions, will actually choose all the forms for you. So in case you didn't know, it'll pick it out okay. right can for you. Can you run us uh, through the interview? Sure. We have a series of questions. Uh, we can toggle between yes and no by using the space bar. For instance, do you itemize deductions? Yes. Do you, uh, did you earn more than $400 in interest? If we say yes, we get an alert that we must file Schedule B. And uh, this tells us that we have to remember to do that later. S suppose you're not sure what the answer to a question is. Okay, if we don't know that, for any form, schedule, or the interview, online help is instantly available by just pressing the F1 key. And it also references you to the appropriate section in the J.K. Lasser's tax guide if you need a more in-depth explanation. Okay. And then once we've completed the interview section, we are given a forms checklist with the flashing arrows there telling us which forms we're going to have to fill out and we can add forms to that if we wish. Mm -hmm. Then we can go and get the actual form, here's 1040 we'll bring up and fill that out. And we can enter our data. And you'll notice that when we enter $1,000 taxable interest we get another alert telling us that we must complete Schedule B. Then if we want to complete Schedule B at this point, we can uh, just press F7. Mm -hmm. We fill in the amount, and then that amount is then lifted and placed in the appropriate line on the 1040, because all forms and schedules are linked. So you only enter data once, which saves a lot of time. Now, one feature of this program is you can compare two different alternative approaches, can't you? Yeah, that is a new feature that we've added this year to the program. And if we bring up the analysis, the analysis section, we have uh, two columns here. Uh, for instance, we can compare filing jointly or separately if you're married, input the data, and then see what our bottom line tax liability is going to be, and just press uh, F5, and we can see that uh, we certainly would save money filing jointly about uh, $5,000 worth of taxes. So this is a handy what-if scenario type of feature that we've added this year. And Deborah, the last year program runs only on the IBM incompatibles? That's correct. It runs on all of those machines as long as you have 256K. Okay, I want to ask you to slide the keyboard over to Jim, and I want to find out about tax preparer now. Jim, your program is at the top end of the spectrum. Gary was talking about $295. What are the power features that you get in that high-end program? Well, the real difference is that rather than forms fill-in software with a lot of IRS instructions on screen, we've implemented the IRS instructions in the software itself. So that in many cases, you don't even have to go to a form or schedule and fill in the data because it's done for you uh, based on raw data from other parts of the, of the uh, return. Okay, show us now how Tax Preparer works and how you do this. And okay. Your screens certainly look different from the other ones we've seen. Yeah, it's, it's really different because we're not really filling in forms. We're just asking for raw data. And uh, if we, in the first example, we'll go directly to Form 1040, Line 17, and rather than filling out a Schedule E, I would itemize to Schedule E. I just pressed I at that point. Mm -hmm. And uh, get something that sort of looks like a Schedule E, but, excuse me, but it's our own format. Mm -hmm. If I go to the um, non-farm partnerships line, let's say I have a, uh, I'm in a real estate venture in a partnership. So I get a K-1 from that partnership. 
All I do is fill out the information from the K-1 onto this worksheet, and the rest is totally automatic. Now, there's one bit of information that's different this year. That's the date you acquired the partnership, and that's important because of the new loss laws, new laws mm -hmm. of disallowed loss. You have to know the date. But just by entering that date, all of a sudden, the return is no more complicated than it was last year because all of the rest is fully automatic. The disallowed losses are computed automatically. And to show this, I'll go to the total line. I'll zero out the amount that was done before and pretend like I haven't done this before. Okay. Now, ordinarily, what I would do if I were pre preparing a return, I would escape out now and print my return. And that would be the end of it. The calculations, transfers are all automatic. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, no keys for you to push. But for the TV screen, I'll force a recalc at this point just, just so that we can see it. And what it's really done in that time, there's the tax balance due, $837. Mm -hmm. What it's done in that time is filled out, followed these 16 pages of IRS instructions <laughs> for Form 8582 for uh -huh. investments, filled out uh, five worksheets for all the properties that I have in this return, uh, created this 8582 because I certainly never did anything. I mean, mm -hmm. I just went to Schedule E and fill out this worksheet. And all of a sudden, this becomes part of the return. And it, it appears when you print out the return. Now, Jim, when, uh, when you're uh, it's filling forms out for you and selecting the forms and so forth, is there any liability issue? Uh, so, suppose I get assessed a, uh, a <laughs> tax at the so end. Did you fill out the wrong yeah. form? Well, I think what it really amounts to is that we have to work a lot harder at testing uh, with our software than the other people do. Mm, that hasn't come up yet. No. <laughs> No, but I mean, seriously, is that an excuse? I mean, suppose you get audited and you say, well, geez, I just did what the program told me to do. Well, no, the individual is always the one that's, that's the person that signs the return is the one that, of course, is liable. And the individual or tax preparer, if a preparer is using this, is the one that's signing the return. So you're really an automated tax preparer. Yeah, we really are. And it's really our reputation rather than legal liability uh, that makes it worthwhile. Yeah. Jim, who, who is this program for? What kind of taxpayer would need something like, like tax preparer? Well, the, the typical family would be a double income family that has enough money to invest, for example, in limited partnerships like this one, or has some rental property on the side, or maybe a business on the side. If you have any of these situations, then you're subject to all the new tax laws, which are tremendously more complicated than they were last year. Yeah. Deborah, Jim, thank you very much. That's our look at tax preparation software. Hope we'll see you here again next week on the Computer Chronicles. Access file this week, OS2 software is finally starting to show up. MicroPro has announced its OS2 version of WordStart 2000 will be available this summer. Software Publishing Corporation says its OS2 version of the Harvard Project Manager will be available this summer. Borland says it will soon be out with OS2 versions of Quattro, Paradox, and the Borland Developers Tools. And Zsoft says it has released the OS2 version of its publisher's paintbrush. Meanwhile, Compact released its version of OS2 for its 286 and 386 base computers. Compaq claims OS2 runs 17 to 52 percent faster on a Compaq Disk Pro 286 than on IBM Model 60. And IBM did some unusual leaking last week, talking about upcoming upgrades in the PS2 line, including a low-cost 286 PS2 and an eventual PS2 line built solely around the 386. IBM also talked about a new 32-bit version of OS2 for next year, the release of PS-DOS 3.4 early this year, and the inclusion of the 8514 high-res graphics card in future PS2 motherboards. IBM execs also promised a new three and a half inch hard drive with a hundred megabyte capacity, a five and a quarter inch hard drive with 500 megabyte T's and a new two inch hard drive holding 50 megabytes. Time for a look at software and this week's review with Paul Schindler. You know, the only musical instrument I know that's more primitive than this one is the IBM personal computer. It has a small, unadjustable speaker and one voice, and that voice is tinny. The PS2 sounds better, but most of us don't have PS2s. And you may remember we showed you the Macintosh Jam session, but most of us don't have Macs. There is an alternative now, the AdLib personal computer music system, a combination of software and a plug-in board for IBM PCs. This program has a jukebox mode, which is slightly animated and mildly entertaining. It offers a choice of several different styles of music, but you're not going to buy this program mainly to hear music written by others. This is the screen where the ad lib system gets down to business, the section it calls the visual composer. You can start with a blank screen and right away, or you can call up one of their canned examples of various musical styles, then modify it to suit your own taste. You can listen to all of the parts at once, or just one. Can't say I care for the green screen, though. 
you could write, record, and play back some semi-serious music with the AdLib Personal Computer Music System, $250 from AdLib Incorporated of Boston. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Ashton Tate unveiled its new D-Base 4 last week, set for release later this year. It has a new look and feel, lots of new bells and whistles, and it can run under MS-DOS or OS2. Eventually, the program crashed during the big announcement press conference last week. But developers say it is faster and easier to use than the older version. Stackworks has announced the availability of HyperCard tax stacks for Max users. They're being offered as shareware on CompuServe and a few other networks. Tax stacks are available for most IRS forms, tables, and worksheets. Share fair fees range between $10 and $20. It looks like the Macintosh laptop is for real. Apple reportedly has placed an order for new active matrix LCD screens from a Japanese supplier starting in July. The new screens are said to be faster, cooler, and easier to read than existing LCD screens. Atari is reportedly set to unveil its Unix workstation at the Hanover Computer Fair in Germany next month. It will use a 68030 chip. Atari may also unveil its long-rumored complete desktop publishing system, computer, laser printer, and software for under $5,000. Finally, in the computer snafu of the week column, Wells Fargo Bank customers got a statement this month from the bank that included the following computer-generated message. You owe your soul to the company store. Why not owe your home to Wells Fargo? An equity advantage account can help you spend what would have been your children's inheritance. Bank officials explained that a test message had inadvertently been inserted into that month's billing statements by a program with a, quote, misplaced sense of humor. That's it for this week's Random Access. I'm Cynthia Steele. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Transcripts of the Computer Chronicles are available online on CompuServe. Type Go Chronicles at any CompuServe prompt. If you'd like the CompuServe access number in your area or a free booklet describing how to use online services, call 1-800-848-8199.